What's going on everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is of course the Tom O'Brien Show. Man, we have a pretty good uh, show in store for you guys today. We have uh, some good guests and everything to discuss uh, certain topics about. And then uh, of course we have a nice market moving right now. Now you probably already know what I'm going to talk about, but we'll get to that in a moment here. Let's take a look at what we got going on just in the broader market in general. Either composite up about 0.31%, the Dow Jones Industrial up about 0.75%. Yeah, that dollar still moving somewhat higher up on that counter trend bounce, trading at 103.60. Of course, we were talking with Steve Rhodes on Monday, and he he brought up uh, some some really interesting points about some capital inflow uh, to the U.S. Of course, we went over as well uh, the potential for Germany uh, to go into a recession uh, as well. So you might get some capital flight from the EU uh, in that capacity, which can kind of explain again uh, this divergence you see. Right, we usually you get a higher movement in the dollar, you get some sell off pressure in the equities especially such a strong move, um, you know, counter uh, than, than how we've been going for the past uh, few months. Uh, let's take a look. We got the ES, yeah, we got the E-mini up about 0.43%, and then gold is moving a little bit today as well, trying to eke back up to that all-time high, 2,708. We are trading at 2,689 right now. Copper up today a little bit as well, 0.65%, trading at 436, and then silver up 0.5%. 5.5% at 31.93. See what else you got. Disney up 1.9%. That's pretty good. They're going to increase some of the prices of their fast track passes, however they call it. Um, I think there's a new tier they're doing. And remember the headline saying it's going to give some uh, Disney goers, um, you know, price shock, ticket shock. And I respond to that is you clearly have not met people who like going to Disney a lot. Uh, they are so about it. And that's really... Uh, really what is so valuable about Disney is the way that they're able uh, to really gain fans and then really retain them in a major way and, and then provide, you know, honestly, pretty good experiences. Uh, I'm not a big Disney guy. I don't go to it a lot. I don't really watch their movies or anything, but I did go to Epcot last December and uh, Morocco was almost my downfall. It was a great time. Uh, but as it stands now, Disney is up 1.9%, trading at $96. It's nice to see a little bit of life coming into that stock after making a pretty large uh, multi-year low at 83.91. All right, let's take a look uh, real quick at Intel. Just kind of down today. Uh, yeah, off 1.3%. Really has not come to life at all after this massive uh, gap down on some pretty high volume. We've been over this company multiple times and why it's just kind of in dire straits. There was some communication or some idea at least uh, that Qualcomm might be buying a portion of them. Uh, Turns out that it's Qualcomm is going to wait at least until after the U.S. election uh, in November, which is coming up very soon. Kind of nuts to think about uh, before deciding whether to pursue an offer to buy Intel Corp. So any kind of hope people had is like saying, hey, well, maybe we can get in here and Qualcomm pays, you know, a premium, uh, you know, for, for the shares on Intel. It's just not happening right now. So you're getting kind of the sell off as it stands. And there's not really interesting anything interesting that's going on. Uh, in this company, you know, I, I think as well, it, you know, can be stated. I, I mean, you know, you have Wolf Speed blowing up, you know, yesterday and today. I think we're up like 18.3% today uh, right now on news again of uh, money coming from the Chips Act, right? And Intel, when this was being kind of announced, was supposed to be, at least everyone's head, you know, a major beneficiary of this. And they've they've kind of continued to screw up every step along the way um, in their designs they have. And then uh, it turns out uh, that their foundry isn't uh, able to produce some of these newer edge uh, kind of chips, uh, at least at um, production quantity. So Intel right now is off about 1.3%. And then I get to talk to you about what you all knew I was gonna talk about, which is Kamiko Corp. Okay, we're up 8.10% right now, floating between 79 and 810 Let's take a look. Let's go through the whole thing. We have Oaklo. Click that wrong. Let's take a look. Oaklo is up 36.22% today. Okay, let's take a look at. I think this is new scale here. 36.08%. What is this all about? Again, this is my big thing. Uh, I say going forward on, on nuclear, of course, Amazon looks like they're going to start investing in some small modular reactors. Of course, NewScale and Oklo are in that. I think Amazon is using uh, X Energy. I really want to talk about, though, with, with Kamiko, right? Because 
it's going to be hard, I would say right now, to determine which of these SMR companies is going to be the winner. Is it going to be Oklo? Is it going to be New Scale? These guys are the ones producing these kind of things. That is really hard to say, I would say, at this moment. Oklo is a little bit interesting because it does have connection, obviously, with Sam Altman. Uh, that is the uh, CEO of ChatGPT, of OpenAI. But one of the things that we can all say is going to be a massive winner is going to be the company that is supplying that material uh, to whoever the winner ends up being. And that's obviously Kamiko. Now, I'd gotten in decent position at Kamiko. You know, we were talking about, uh, I think around this low here in September, of uh, this potentially being a really fantastic buy um, going forward. Of course, some of the news that's coming out is really pushing this guy a lot higher. I would say at this point right now, you know, you do have a high volume again, kind of a minor gap up, right? Large candle for the day, but that's all right. And uh, we're getting very close to the high, right? A 56.24. We are making some good volume. At this point here, I necessarily don't want to add more, right? I think still on the long term for sure, Kamiko is a winner. And it's we're all going to be sitting back having gotten this and be like, wow, that was such a good call, right? But this is going to be a few years from now. I mean, keep in mind, some of these reactors aren't planned to come back online until 2028, right? That's when you start seeing some actual financials come out that support this kind of concept. This is a lot of buying on news right now, which is totally fine and people want to price in the future. But it's something to keep in mind. You still have a lot of time before, you know, I say... You start seeing Kamiko produce even more, sell more per each kind of group cell they have. So I get a little bit, I would say, um, cautious at these kind of levels because you could absolutely see a pullback. You know, they have earnings coming out on November 7th. The earnings aren't necessarily going to reflect this kind of stock price as they are now. Um, that definitely can present a buying opportunity, I would say, if people kind of get scared on that. They're like, well, hey, wait a minute, this might be a longer term play uh, than I had wanted. Sell off, you might get kind of back in. That's kind of my thought on Kamiko right now, but I still think on the long term, great buy. It's just a question now of what's the best time uh, to get in the best price point. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. We have a great guest coming up for you next.